That's what's disturbing to me is this sort of wholesale acceptance of this denial the, the, where we're, you know, we're deciding that there is no difference and that, you know, these differences are cultural. These differences are purely brought upon by the patriarchal society to try to suppress members of the opposite sex. And it's just... It doesn't back up with science. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And even, you know, uh, patriarchy uh, is an interesting one that I've uh, written about in, in, in my most recent book um, where um, it, it, it's it's kind of bizarre because – and people won't like this either. So uh, talking about um, scientifically uncomfortable truths. So, so one is that if you ask the question – Historically, it has been true that men have um, more than women tended to control resources and power. Okay, and that's been true of most cultures, you know, throughout history as far as we, we know. Uh, but then the issue is why? Um, well, if you go back to sexual selection theory that we were talking about earlier, part of the part of the causal chain boils down to women's mate preferences. So women preferentially select men who have the ability and willingness to acquire and control resources. And so that in turn selects for men who have the motivation to do precisely those things. And so if you ask the question, what is the origin of this thing we call patriarchy, which is usually invoked when you say, what do you mean by patriarchy? You go, oh, I don't know, everyone knows what it means. Well, no, it means different things. So one aspect of it is resource control. Uh, but of course, there are other aspects of it. And so, um, and, and so it may be disturbing to some to recognize that women's mate preferences are part of the causal chain that led to a, an a outcome that they don't like in the current time. But, but to your point, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a scientist. And so you go with, with the data. And I object to and find um, abhorrent the infusion of ideology into the science. So, and, and this is hap this is indeed happening, as you as you allude to. It's happening more and more, uh, and I think that I'm hoping that there will be a swing back in the other direction. When people will say, "Hey, look, no, wait, let's keep ideology out of this," yes, uh, because it it doesn't have a belonging in, in science. Isn't that a recent thing? The the injection of ideology into science. Well. Um, I don't know. I think it's gotten worse. I think that it's always existed in American psychology to some degree, in American social science anyway, which is, you know... Um, like what, what examples have existed well, well, before this well, era? Um, and this may not exactly fall in ideology, but I'm sure... I, have you had Steve Pinker on your yes. show? Yes. Okay, well... A couple times. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his. I've been... As am I. Uh, yeah. Friends with That's him for, for many, many years, and his book, The Blank Slate, um, lays all this out. And I'll tell you a story uh, uh, kind of about The Blank Slate when I was in graduate school. So when I was in graduate school, I had multiple mentors, which is a good thing, something I always recommend to my students. Um, but one of these mentors was a woman who her theory is that the reason that you see any sex differences at all when you see them is because socialization. So they dress, parents dress girls in pink, they dress boys in blue, and that's why you see sex differences. They give boys Tonka trucks and baseball bats, and they give girls Barbie dolls. And she even, well, she, she published in the top journals, there was a science documentary literally called The Pinks and the Blues that kind of captures that whole thing. And I was skeptical as a graduate student, you know, really? So the notion that people come into this world as blank slates makes absolutely no evolutionary sense. You know, the notion that we are just these passive receptacles of whatever, you know, the culture or parents have happened to put in there, it can't be. We evolved to be active strategists that pick and choose. Well, well no, that doesn't make sense to me, or I'm going to follow this person rather than that person. You know, we're not 
passive receptacle. And, and, and that's sort of the implicit notion of the blank slate is that humans are just these passive absorbers of whatever happened they happen to be exposed to. Um, and so, uh, and so weirdly, I had this mentor who, who believed in the blank slate and that there were no evolved sex differences, no fundamental cross-culturally universal evolved sex differences. And then, you know, here I am many years later um, studying precisely that, evolved sex differences. And, and, and I would say that the science denialism uh, and the ideological denialism will become increasingly difficult because as you undoubtedly know, Joe, there's been a, uh, you know, what's called the replication crisis in the social sciences and also in medicine as well, you know, where people, you know, the payoffs are, you know, you, you publish high impact surprising findings and some, sometimes they don't replicate and um, often they don't replicate. And so um, uh, the, the sex differences that we've been talking about sex differences in mate preferences and desire for sexual variety, et cetera, uh, in motivations for having affairs, these are among the largest, most replicable findings in the whole field of psychology. You know, most, um, you know, for, for those of your listeners who are statistically inclined, most effect sizes are in psychology are very, very small. You know, they, there's an effect, you know, but it just barely reaches statistical significance and, you know, translates into a, like a D statistic of 0 0.3, 0 0.25. These are the sex differences that we're talking about are, are large. You don't even have to. I can show you a graph of them and you don't even have to run the statistics to see, yes, there's something fundamentally wrong. The bars for men are here. The bars for women are there. Or, or reversed. And so these are large replicable sex differences. And so you really have to be um, really severely ideologically driven to, uh, to deny them. And so I like to think that over the long run, the, the empirical fact uh, of the science will prevail. Um, but um, that's why it's been surprising to me that, I mean, these are some of these have been demonstrated for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, and then now we live in this weird time of sex difference denialism, which doesn't make sense. It's not just that we live in a world of sex difference denialism, but it, mm. it's become the primary philosophy. It's, 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 yeah. not, it's not rare. It's it's actually promoted in mainstream media. It's promoted yeah. in television and print journalism, and it's promoted as if it's a fact. Yeah, and by and by some uh, social scientists as well, yes. or claim to be scientists. Yeah. Well, they're leaning into the same sort of ideology that's on campuses. Yeah. And they get captured by it, and then they're they're saying these things so that they're accepted by the clan 